The Ice Gem 280 from Silverstone is an ARGB LED 280 millimeter AIO that has a price tag of around 155 USD. But is it any good? Let's find out. What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. For those of you who are new to the channel, I test and review PC cases, CPU coolers, PC case fans and video cards. Before I get into the overview, to have full disclosure, Silverstone did send me over this cooler to test and review, but all opinions expressed in this video are mine. So if you end up liking this video, can you please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel because it does help a lot. Plus, if you really like the channel and appreciate all the testing I do, can you please support the channel by using my Amazon Associates links in the description? All you need to do is click on the link that suits your location, and when you add an item or items to your cart and order them, the channel will get a small kickback at no added cost to you. Now for the overview, the Ice Gem lineup consists of three AIOs, the Ice Gem 360, the Ice Gem 280, and the Ice Gem 240. So nice and simple. Let's see what you get in the box of the Ice Gem 280. There is the AIO and fans, of course, a large bag with all the mounting hardware in it. There is also a second bag with the ARGB cables. There is a two-in-one fan splitter, an ARGB sync cable, a two-to-one ARGB 50-50 cable, and an ARGB controller with a SATA power cable. Looking at the AIO, the radiator is aluminum with an FPI of 21. FPI is fins per inch. The tubing is rubber with a nylon cover and is a pretty typical length at 400 millimeters. The pump is inside the block and it is a 12 volt pump. The max rated RPM of the pump is 3000 and the pump is powered by a separate three pin connector. The top of the block has a plastic cap. This cap is meant to scatter or fragment the light coming from the integrated five volt ARGB LEDs that are in the block. The cold plate is copper and should have full coverage of a Threadripper IHS. So yes, that makes the block on the larger side, with the dimensions being 76 millimeters wide by 76 millimeters long by 66 millimeters deep, or tall. Moving on to the fans, these are 140 millimeter fans. The fans are ARGB LED fans. They also have a four pin PWM connector. There are 11 blades on these fans. They have rubber pads on each of the corners. The max rated RPM of these fans is 1600 with the minimum RPM being 600 and they have a hydraulic bearing. Okay, the dimensions of the radiator with the fans attached is 314 millimeters long by 140 millimeters wide by 54 millimeters deep. That brings us to the socket compatibility. The Ice Gem 280 is compatible with most mainstream Intel sockets, as well as Intel's HPC lineup, but it is not compatible with the LGA 1700 socket. For AMD compatibility, it is compatible with AMD's mainstream sockets, as well as TR4 and TRX4. Okay, moving on to how to install the CPU cooler. The installation between Intel and AMD mainstream sockets is pretty similar, but if you're installing this cooler onto an HPC or Threadripper socket, please check the installation guide. As always, before you start, make sure you have a flat, clean, and sturdy surface. You should also have a mat, preferably an anti-static mat. You will also need a PH2 screwdriver, and you should also have some isopropyl alcohol. Plus, you'll probably need a SATA cable if you want the ARGB LEDs to work. I'll be starting by installing the fans and radiator onto the chassis. Now I do recommend installing the radiator along the top of the case with the fans on the top orientated as exhaust. But if you do want to install your radiator along the front of your case, with the pump being inside the block, this shouldn't be an issue, but it is best practice to install the radiator with the tubing at the bottom, if you can. I understand it is not always possible to do this, but it is best practice. Now to install a block, you should have your motherboard already mounted in your case. Then you'll need to find the provided backplate and spacer. You will need to peel the paper off the spacer and stick the spacer onto the groove side of the backplate for AMD. For Intel, it would be the non-groove side. 
because this is the side that will be touching the back of the motherboard. Finally provided through bolts and plastic holders, spacer thingies. Slide the through bolts through the corresponding holes for your socket. Then slide the plastic spacers over the through bolt screws. This will hold the screws in place while we align the back plate to the holes on your motherboard. Aligning the back plate and the through bolt screws to the holes on the motherboard. Once you have, place the standoff spacers over each through bolt screw. The little circle on the standoff spacer needs to be facing the motherboard. The standoff spacers will hold the back plate and the screws in place while we install the block. The next step is to find the correct mounting clip for your socket. Mine came with the Intel mounting clip pre-installed, so you may need to remove that first. To remove the mounting clip, simply just slide the clip off the block. To install a mounting clip is simple, just slide the correct mounting clip onto the block. With the correct mounting clip on the block, it's time to clean off the CPU's IHS with some isopropyl alcohol, then apply the provided or your own thermal compound to the CPU's IHS. Now, with the correct mounting clip installed, plus making sure you have removed the sticker from the bottom of the cold plate, place the block cold plate down onto the CPU's IHS, aligning the holes on the mounting clip to the through bolt screws. Now we need to screw in the four spring retention screws to the through bolt screws. You will need to use a PH2 screwdriver to make sure that the spring retention screws are tight. Once that's done, we'll need to plug in the cables. I'll start off with the pump. This connector should be plugged into the pump header on your motherboard, if your motherboard has one. If your motherboard doesn't have a pump header, it can be plugged into a typical fan header. Next, I'll plug in the fans. So find the two to one fan cable and plug in the fans that are on the radiator. This fan cable should be plugged into the CPU fan header on your motherboard. With that done, I'm going to daisy chain the 5 volt ARGB cables of the fans. Then plug the male lead from one of the fans into the female connector of the block. Then plug the male connector from the block into the female connector of the ARGB sync cable. Now plug in the corresponding 5 volt ARGB connector into your motherboard. Finally, you'll need to plug in the sync cable's SATA power cable. If you don't, the ARGB LEDs won't work properly. And that's the installation. Next, I'll quickly go over both the RPM range and the ARGB LEDs of the fans and the block. Starting with the RPM range of the fans, with the fans attached to the radiator and the fans at 100% PWM, the motherboard is showing the RPM at 1700-ish and this had the DBA at 44. Then dropping the PWM down to zero, the motherboard is now showing the RPM at around 650-ish, and that has the DBA at or below my noise floor of 32. Now for the pump, so at 12 volts, the pump's RPM is at 2940-ish. Then when I drop the voltage down to 4.56, the pump's RPM is at around 1290-ish, and if I drop the voltage any lower, the pump actually stops working. Moving on to the LEDs. I personally don't like the way the block looks when looking at it straight on. There isn't any real diffusion of the LEDs, but when you're looking at it from an angle, the cap does then scatter the light quite nicely, so you no longer see the hot spots of the LEDs, which in my opinion looks much better. For the fans, I think they look quite good. The LEDs are bright and the colors do look pretty good. Moving on to the temperature testing. If you haven't watched my CPU cooler testing methodology video, I strongly suggest you do. It's where I go over the how and what of my CPU cooler testing. I'll have a card above and I'll also have a link in the description. So the Ice Gem 280 in the 35dBA noise equalized 87 watt test was only able to match the AK120 and the BA120 with a CPU temperature of 72.6C. And since the AK120 and the BA120 are like $30-ish, if not actually a bit lower than that, the Ice Gem 280 isn't looking so great here. But when you let the fans run at full speed, the average CPU temperature drops to 70.5C. Now again, that does have a DBA of 44. So a two Celsius difference between the 35 DBA and full speed tests or another way to look at this is 2 Celsius for 9 dBA. Then in the 150 watt noise equalized test, 
the CPU had an average steady state temperature of 79.3C, which again has it matching the AK120 and the BA120. But again, if you let the fans run at full speed, the average CPU steady state temperature dropped to 74.7C. So around a four and a half Celsius difference between the 35 dBA and full speed tests. So what do I think of the Ice Gem 280? To keep this simple, the 35 dBA performance was underwhelming, which you can see in these charts that it is matching the AK120 and the BA120, which are 25 to 30 USD. And to the point that the Ice Gem 280 is 155 USD or thereabouts anyways, that 35 dBA testing just really did not do as well as I was expecting it to. And especially when you're comparing it to the Ice Gem 360, which is only actually 10 USD more on Amazon.com at time of writing the script anyways, and its performance was much better in the 35 dBA. Now it was louder at the full speed, but it was able to maintain a good temperature or a better temperature at 35 dBA. So if your case can actually support a 360 millimeter radiator, I would definitely recommend going with the 360 over the 280. But again, if your case doesn't support a 360 millimeter radiator, I don't think this is the 280 that you're looking for. Because you can get a similar performing air cooler for 100 USD less, if not even less than that. And I guess I'm just going to leave it at that. So if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching and you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. There's also the HFG Discord server. It is completely free to join. All you need to do is agree to the server rules. Then you get to view all of my charts. A link is in the description. There is also Patreon if you'd like to support the channel directly. Again, a link is in the description. Uh, you may want to check out this video here. It would probably be my CPU cooler playlist. And as always, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.